So you want to become financially independent, live off your dividends, and even retire early? Is it even possible to live off of your dividends? And how much do you actually need? In this video, I'll be going over how much money you need in your investment portfolio, how long it will take to actually get there, and three, how to structure your investments for dividend income. So first things first, how much do you actually need to live off of your dividends? So before we even take a look at dividends or the stock market, you want to go ahead and actually evaluate your expenses. Now, this is going to be different depending on your situation. So if you're single living you know, at your parents' place, you know, you're going to be able to save costs on rent. So you're going to have different expenses, right? But, you know, you might be a family person and you have um, different mouths to feed. So, again, it is going to be different on your situation. So really go ahead and evaluate your expenses for your life. And from there, you want to go ahead and take a look at what is the minimum amount you need to actually live off of. Then you also want to take into consideration future expenses. So maybe if down the road you might consider getting married or, you know, maybe having kids, something like that. That is something to consider in the future. Now, when you're living off of your dividends, you won't have to spend as much on transportation. So that is something to consider later on. Maybe that's a cost you can save again, you know, later on down the road. But and you really want to be specific with the number, with how much you want to actually uh, spend money. So when you go ahead and evaluate your expenses, don't just let it be like a fudge number, you know, really try and get as specific as possible with the amount of money you're going to need to live off of. Then once you've figured out how much you actually need and you've evaluated your expenses, you want to go ahead and figure out, do you want to live entirely off of your dividend investment portfolio or do you want to go ahead and use part of your investment capital as well? So this is also known as in the FIRE community, the 4% rule. Now I've looked into it and some, some people say it's like 3.5%, some say it's like 4.5% that it has been changing. But the idea, let's just say 4%, is let's say you have an investment portfolio of a million dollars. They say you can go ahead and take up $40,000 because that's 4% of the 1 million and live off of that for the year and your investment should continue to grow. And so you should be able to live off of your investment capital and take out 4% and let it continue to grow. And you can ideally just retire off of that. I believe it's for 20 to 30 years. But if you want to do longer than that, I heard you have to do more, a little more than 4%. Again, depending on your situation, take a look at if you want to live off your dividends or if you want to also take out some capital as well, maybe do both. All right. And I'll go ahead and leave a link somewhere above uh, discussing like the 4% rule and just kind of so you can get a little more depth on that. Then I would also go ahead, once you've decided, I personally do go ahead and invest just for a dividend income. I'm not really interested in doing the 4% rule. So that is something to take note. Uh, I do look for companies that pay about a 5% dividend yield. Some companies, they might only do about a 3% dividend yield, but it's such a solid growing company that I figure, you know what, I'll go ahead and invest into this company with a 3% dividend yield. And then there's some companies I'll even do 7%. But usually I ideally try to keep it around 5% at best. And I wouldn't recommend just looking at uh, the dividend yield. That's not just the only statistic I look at, but it's something I do like to take into consideration and try to aim for when I'm looking for different companies to invest in. If we just keep it at this 5% dividend yield and we want to go ahead and have about a uh, $25,000 per year in dividend income, then we're going to need about $500,000 of a dividend investment portfolio. And if you want to go ahead and have about $37,000 per year of dividend income, that's going to respectively be about $750,000 saved up, you know, invested in your dividend investment portfolio and so on. And now at this point, I'm sure you're probably thinking, you know, man, that's a million dollars. I can't grow that. You know, that takes too long to actually go ahead and, and build up. You know, it's all bogus, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at how long it will actually take to grow your investment portfolio. Now, it does sound a little crazy, right? But think about this. Most people are willing to go ahead and invest in property, usually do about a 30 year mortgage where their home is usually about anywhere from $500,000 to a million dollar home, right? And you usually spend about 30 years building up your home equity in that property. It's kind of the same idea with dividend investment portfolio. You want to go ahead and take the time to grow your portfolio. You're not going to grow it overnight. It's not going to take, you know, just a week. It's going to take time. It will take time, but once you take your baby steps, your portfolio will continue to grow and grow and work for you. And once you get into the habit of just investing in general, it'll become a little easier. But really, you just need some time to go ahead and grow your portfolio over time. It's just going to take time. Throw time at it. Time, time, time.
Time is your friend when you want to go ahead and invest and grow your portfolio. And again, this is a long-term strategy. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be a week, but it's going to continue to grow. And yeah, some years it's going to fluctuate. Some years it's going to be worse. Some years it's going to go sideways, whatever. But over time, usually the stock market will continue to grow up as well as if you've invested in solid companies with solid dividends, they're actually going to go ahead and grow the dividend as well, where if you have a dividend that pays, let's say, a dollar per year, that company will actually go ahead and continue to grow that dividend as the stock price continues to grow as well. So that is something to also remember when you're investing in dividend or growing companies, not only is the capital going to grow, but the dividends that get paid out will continue to grow as well and work in your favor. So the amount of money that you start off with is going to be known as your initial deposit. So let's say you have a couple grand saved up, let's say five grand for this example. You go ahead and take that five grand and you go ahead and put it into your investment portfolio and you don't take it out. Then from there, you're actually going to want to go ahead and determine how much money you personally are willing to go ahead and put into your investment portfolio. For example, some people might get paid weekly, some people might get paid bi-weekly, but determine whatever time frame it is you get paid and figure out what's a comfortable amount you can go ahead and invest into your portfolio. Now, some people like to do percentages. Some people like to do just, you know, direct numbers. So figure out whatever works best for you. Even if it's just, you know, $5, $10, whatever, $100, you know, whatever you, re you really can go ahead and just put aside while still, of course, taking care of your expenses and day-to-day -day things. Usually most employers are going to allow that you can also automate this. So if you have, you know, a dividend investment account, you can go ahead and just automate X amount into your dividend investment portfolio. Once you've determined the amount of money you want to go ahead and invest and you're comfortable with investing, I would actually recommend going ahead and just automating it. But if you want to go ahead and do it manually, you can. And I know this is going to be a little controversial, but I actually wouldn't recommend putting all of your money into like your retirement account. Now, I know there's going to be great tax benefits as well as uh, like company matches, things like that, where if you go ahead and put 5% of your salary, your employer will go ahead and match you and give you 5% as well. So definitely, I would recommend taking advantage of those sorts of benefits. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting so much money into your retirement account. Because remember, you can only take out money from that account once you hit 65. And the idea with a dividend investment portfolio that pays you income is that you can take it out really at any point you want to. So definitely take advantage of the benefits for your retirement account. But I would definitely recommend instead, once you've maxed out those benefits, to go ahead and start looking into a dividend investment portfolio. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, what exactly is the time frame to go ahead and invest and grow your dividend portfolio? Well, if we go ahead and take a look at a $500,000 portfolio, so that, that means we get, if we keep it at that 5% dividend yield estimate, um, we can go ahead and see that it'll take about $25,000 of income per year, or it'll generate us $25,000 of income per year. Now, if we started with our example of $5,000 when we initially started, and we add about $500 per month, we'll see that it only takes about 21 years and seven months to grow. And that is with a 10% growth rate. So let's say 5% of the capital continues to grow each year. It grows at about a rate of 5%. And we have that 5% uh, growth from the dividends so that totals it out to 10% growth per year on average. And again, it is going to fluctuate. But let's just keep it at an average of 10%. And that is actually lowballing. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and have a dividend investment portfolio size of about a million dollars and that'll generate an income, a yearly income of $50,000. If we start off again with the $5,000 and we simply add about $1,000 per month and just let that continue to grow and we keep it at that same rate of 10% and that is a more conservative number, we should be able to reach our million dollar goal in only 22 years. So achieving your dividend investment goals is really just going to be determined by how consistent you are with growing your portfolio over time. As we saw, 22 years really isn't as long as most 30 year mortgages, right? Usually when you go ahead and take out your 30 year loan, you, I mean, you got to spend 30 years to go ahead and build up your equity in the property and pay off the loan, right? Whereas with this dividend investment portfolio, it only takes about 22 years to really achieve either a million dollars or even $500,000. And again, it is going to vary depending on your situation. So now we're going to take a look at how to go ahead and structure your portfolio. Usually, uh, I know with Warren Buffett, he actually says with just 10 different companies, that's really all the amount of companies you really need to achieve, you know, millionaire status, like a, a nice solid wealth. But some people even recommend 20 to 25 different companies to invest in. I personally do it anywhere from 10 to 15. So try and find, you know, a, a fair amount that works for you. If you're just, you know, one bet, and all, I would actually even recommend doing an ETF. So I do do about 10 to 15 individual picked stocks. 
uh, just companies that I truly believe are very solid companies. And then from there, I try to do about an, one ETF. Right now, I think, yeah, it has been one ETF that I've just consistently been at. Um, and an ETF, just your exchange traded fund, or you could do like an index fund, which is pretty much just like a basket of the top uh, companies and that are in your country. So, you know, the US is gonna be the top, usually like 500 to 100 companies top performing within the country. But you usually wanna go ahead and invest in companies that are pretty solid, that continue to grow its dividend, that continue to innovate. And then with that ETF that you have there, it's pretty much just gonna take the entire results of the entire stock market and just continue to grow over time. And yeah, again, it is gonna fluctuate some years, it's gonna go down, you know, sideways, whatever. But usually historically, the stock market has continued to grow and grow and grow. So that's why with the ETF, it helps uh, lower your risk. And if you go now from here, while you're growing your dividend portfolio, you want to go ahead and really evaluate if you want to go ahead and take out the dividends that get paid out to you or go ahead and actually reinvest them. This is called like a drip where whatever platform you're using to go ahead and invest, they let you go ahead and take that dividend money that would have been paid out to you and just reinvest it back into uh, your portfolio. Now, when you're going ahead and growing your portfolio, I, I would personally uh, just go ahead and just reinvest your dividends, like pretend it's not even there, so you don't even like touch it or anything, but you can go ahead and take it out. So I know some people actually prefer to take it out because they see it kind of like as the reward sort of thing, but then take note that it might take a little longer than normal to go ahead and grow your portfolio. But even then, the 10% was very conservative. I know in the US, the average is about 10 to 12% return per year, and that's not even including dividends. So you can, you can add that 5% dividend yield plus the 10 to 12 percent well let me say 10 percent so it really is about a 15 percent yield at least within the u.s so but i just wanted to use more conservative numbers because to think of it as more of a worst case scenario you should still be able to grow your investment or achieve your investment goal within about 20 to 25 years remember that this money is going to continue to grow and grow over time your capital is going to continue to grow if you've invested in solid companies and your dividends are going to continue to grow because that's something people tend to miss out on uh, I believe it was with 3M, if you would have looked just from 2010 to 2015, they actually doubled their dividend within that five year time span. So imagine 20 years. Usually if you don't even, if you just buy, let's say a thousand dollars of a company with 3% in 20 years, usually that's like a nice 10 to 15% return just off of the dividends alone. You know, and they just continue to make it grow and grow over time. Now, uh, somewhere you might want to take a look at is taking a look at some dividend aristocrat stocks which is pretty much just companies that have continued to grow their dividend and pay out dividends to their investors over the last 25 years or more. So usually pretty solid companies, but again, invest at in your own risk, you know, and go ahead and invest whatever you think works best for you. And a quick disclaimer, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video is for your fun and entertainment. Before you go and invest in the stock market, please go ahead and consult a licensed financial advisor. So now we've learned how to live off your dividends by taking a look at how much money you need to go ahead and invest in your investment portfolio, how long it might take you to actually achieve your investment goal, and how to structure your investments for dividend income. And I hope this video has inspired you guys to continue achieving and striving for your investment goals. I wish you guys a really great day. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and gained value out of today's video. Thanks for watching.